Congratulations on your new purchase of your Rottler F10 XS boring and surfacing machine. This video is going to give you a little walkthrough on how to set up and install your machine in your facility. Before we get started, there's a few things that we're going to want to have in terms of tools. A multimeter or something to measure voltage for the incoming power. A series of small Phillips and standard screwdrivers. An electrician set can be useful. A ratchet with a 15 16 socket. And a set of Allen keys. Before we do anything with the machine, we're going to want to unpack and find what we call our pizza box. Your pizza box is going to have all of the required paperwork that's shipped with your machine, including your invoice, packing slip, and installation manual. When you open up, the first thing you're going to want to do is find your packing slip. Now, depending on the optional equipment that you've purchased with your machine, your optional equipment, the fixtures and tooling, some of it may come on the machine and some of it may come in a separate crate. You're going to want to open up that crate and look through it and make sure that you see everything that you purchased is with your machine. If you have anything missing or potential back orders, go ahead and send an email to parts at rottlermfg.com and we'll be happy to assist you to give you any information and get the stuff that you require. Inside of the pizza box, you should be able to find the installation manual in a laminated cover. Before beginning, it's a good idea to give a quick once over of the installation checklist as well as the procedure, which can be found in the first couple pages. Once you have your installation checklist open to the initial page, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check our power. The power for this machine is 208 to 240 volts single phase AC power as well as your air requirements. We want to have about an 80 PSI at 1 CFM air supply. So if you don't have those things set up already or have them available to you, go ahead and get those done now. If you don't have the required power, give Rottler a call or give an email to service at rottlermfg.com where we can assist you with helping you spec a transformer that can be supplied by a local electrician. Here at the back of the machine, we can open up the electrical cabinet and we can begin wiring up the machine. We will need our electronic cabinet key, which is usually attached to the front of the machine, and a second one will be found inside the pizza box. When we remove the electrical enclosure cabinet, there will be a wire attached to the fan. You want to disconnect that before removing it entirely. Once we have access to the electronics of the machine, we're going to want to go ahead and take our small electronic set of screwdrivers and we want to give a once over through all the cabinets pieces. During the shipping environment, things can vibrate and shake loose, so it's a good idea to check every connection and make sure that all the wires are still intact. With the main electronics uncovered, we can now begin to check all wires. It's a good idea with two fingers to go ahead and put tension on any connections to any of the axis amps on the left side, the spindle and I.O. boards, as well as the breakers. Before finishing, make sure you check all USB connections, as well as encoder and temperature sensors. With power disconnected from your main line, either unplugged or off at your main breaker, make sure that all of your small breakers inside the cabinet are turned to the off position. Green means safe, as well as your main power supply. You will then be able to connect your single phase AC power into the first and third positions at the top of the main breaker. Once connected, without turning the breaker on, 
check that your incoming line voltage is within range. Again, per the spec, this should be between 208 and 240 volts AC. If all looks good, proceed to turning all your small breakers back on, and finally, your main breaker. This will power on the machine. After powering on the machine, check to make sure that the blue light inside your machine's computer is on. It's a good time to also check all USB connections, as well as power. If the computer has not turned on, check that the main power switch found to the incoming line power for the computer is to the on position and press the blue power on switch. Your air regulators are attached to the left side on the rear of the machine and the main connection comes in on the lower regulator. Connect your airline and check your regulator to make sure that it's reading 80 PSI. If it's not, adjust with the knob above it until you see 80 PSI on the main regulator. If you've been following along until this point, your machine should now be wired and turned on. If everything was done correctly, the computer screen should be completely turned on and the Rottler logo should be illuminated. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your e-stop is pressed in and then you can double tap the Rottler software to open it up. The next step will be leveling of the machine. To level the machine, you'll need a machinist's level with preferably a half thou per foot resolution, such as this stair right here. To begin the leveling process, we're going to want to use our Allen keys and pull back the way covers on either side of the spindle base. The way covers can be removed with three bolts, which are on either side of the spindle base, and then pulled back. With the way covers exposed and the top spindle base surface open, rag and some WD-40 can be used to degrease and clean the surface. And then we're ready to begin leveling. Uh, ideally, it's typically easiest to level front to back first and then side to side. And then we'll repeat this process on the lower bed to make sure that both are in line. The Rottler F10XS machine is a four point leveling system. Leveling bolts can be found at each of the front of the corners as well as the rear. To adjust, we'll use our 15 16 ratchet and tweak leveling bolts evenly, counting turns, half, quarter, eighth, doing it the same on both sides and tracking it with our level. We'll do front to back first and then left, right, second. When leveling your machine, a few tips and tricks would be to Check that your level has been calibrated first. If not, flip the level 180 degrees and check it in both directions. Another thing to keep in mind is no matter where you decide to level, make sure that you check in a couple places. There could be burrs, grit, defects within your level or underneath the surface that, that you're contacting and that can lead to inaccuracies in leveling. The more time spent in this process and the more accurate that your level is, the better the finished product will be. For the left to right adjustment, adjust one side in the front and back equally to ensure it's level across the axis. Once you've completed your leveling left to right, 
it's a good idea to go back and check front to back. It's not uncommon for things to change. Another thing to keep in mind is with our four points of level, it's possible to get what's called a soft foot. So after you finished and got everything to within spec, you're gonna wanna just check with your ratchet and make sure that each of the four points do have some tension on them. Once you've leveled the top portion of the machine, we're gonna wanna take our level and move down to the bed. Before going too far into this process, it's a good idea to check at three locations across the bed. We'll do front to back first, and then left to right, just like we did above. Placing our level in line or close to in line with the leveling bolts and checking at the right, middle, and left of the bed before we make any adjustments to see how even things are. We're gonna want to average these things out and most importantly, make sure that it matches to within tolerance what we did at the top. If you completed the leveling portion properly, you should be within about a thou per foot of deviation across all surfaces you've measured. Uh, this one here I was able to get within a half thousandth of deviation, but no more than three thou over the whole surface per the spec in the installation manual. If you've been following along up until this point, the machine should now be powered on, level, and the way cover should be reinstalled. The final step to making your F10XS operational will be to hop in the back and release the castle nut, which is the clamping nut that is used during shipping to secure the entire workhead. We'll hop around the back of the machine, remove the rear cover with the four bolts, loosen the nut and reset the cotter pin to allow the workhead to move freely. At this point, your machine should be powered on, all electronics should be secure, and the machine should be level. The way cover should be reinstalled and the machine should be on and at the home screen with the software powered up. The last step is to loosen and reset the cotter pin for the clamp inside the spindle base, which is secured during shipping to make sure nothing moves. Uh, we'll release the four bolts for the back panel on the spindle base and show you where that is in the next step. From the back of the machine, we we'll wanna remove the four bolts holding on the back panel of the spindle base. To do this, we'll need a 5 30 seconds and an 8th inch Allen key. The 5 30 seconds for the top two. And the 8th inch for the bottom. Set the panel aside, and this will expose the inner workings of the spindle base. Inside here, the clamping system has a castle nut with a cotter pin. The cotter pin should be stowed in here or either inside the pizza box. You wanna make sure you have that with you. And in the next step, we'll go over loosening this per the manual and reinstalling the cotter pin to the correct location. From inside the spindle base, you'll see the castle nut and cotter pin for the workhead clamp assembly. We'll want to loosen this castle nut and remove the cotter pin. Then we will hand tighten down until the castle nut is just touching and then back it off approximately a twelfth of a turn to the first slot that allow the cotter pin to go in. In the completed position, it should look approximately like this. If you've done this correctly, then proceed to the next step. Once completing the castle nut adjustment on the spindle base, your workhead should be free to move. At this point, make sure you have your Brotler software open, remove the e-stop, and from the main screen, you want to press home in the upper left corner to home the machine. With the machine home, there should be a default block profile already loaded in the machine. This is used during the testing after the machine has completed assembly. 
select the default block, and select a cylinder bore operation. If no default block or no cylinder bore operation exists, create those by simply adding a program under new and a new mode for cylinder bore. From within the cylinder bore screen, you should see operations for float, neutral clamp, and full clamp. You're going to want to make sure that if you activate the float, your machine's workhead now floats freely. If pressing neutral clamp, you should be able to move it, but with friction. And under full clamp, you should no longer be able to move. If all this works correctly, that means that the castle nut adjustment was done to specification. From this point, it's a good idea to run the machine through its paces. Simply select neutral clamp, and under the axis identifiers for X and Z, select the 10 thousandths hand wheel increment and jog the machine. The machine should move freely in both the x-axis, which is along left to right of the machine, and z, which is the spindle quill. At this point, our installation is complete. The machine should be operational and functioning for all of the actuations of the clamping system, as well as the motors for the x and z axes. If you have any questions or need any assistance while installing your F10XS, please give a call to Rottler Service or email us at service at rottlermfg.com.